And good morning, everybody. Welcome to Casual Coffee with Ken. My name is Ken, and I'm going to sneeze, I think. Maybe? Maybe? Maybe not. Maybe I'm okay. Okay. No sneeze for now. Welcome to Friday. We made it. It's the end of the week, finally. This has been just, I mean, I guess it's been an okay week. It hasn't been the best of weeks, but, uh, you know, everything is relative, I guess. It's pretty, pretty good. I hope you guys are doing well. I hope everybody is uh, doing okay. And there's my wife in the background trying to <laughs> sneak out to go for her walk. But, uh, yeah, see, she's being healthy. She's actually going to go for a walk, and I'm sitting here on my butt in front of a camera, not exercising. But, you know. People need to be entertained, Ken. Yeah, yeah. I don't know that I'm that entertaining. Well, Sean thinks so. Good morning, Sean. Hope you're doing well. So, yeah, I am very, very glad that uh, today is Friday, that it's the end of the week, and uh, two days of of hopefully not thinking about things, because that's been my downfall. I want to know how you're doing. However, if you're new here to the show, you can comment on the show, and I do see those comments show up here. And uh, and yeah, I'd love to know where you're watching from, especially if this is your first time. Um, and uh, yeah, because I love to know where my audience is located. That's the fun part about this for me versus doing just regular videos. I like the interactivity of a live stream and being able to just you know talk to people from literally all over the world and uh, yeah so anyway it's uh, it's interesting uh, the state of things here in Reno uh, our governor announced yesterday that there was we're starting to open things back up uh, that's caused a lot of not division necessarily but uh, there, there's been a lot of talk about it. I know a lot of my friends are excited because they are going to be able to uh, get their hair cut now because salons are part of the group of businesses that are now able to reopen here in Reno. The casinos are not reopening yet. Uh, so, uh, you know, I'm excited to go get my hair cut, but um, despite the weird flippy thing it's doing right there, I, I kind of like how it's looking growing out. I think I might just uh, just get it trimmed up a little and let it keep growing, because why not? It's been a while since I've had longer hair, at least long compared to what I usually do. So yeah, it's it's kind of grown out already past that weird annoying stage for me, and uh, I might just let it keep going, see what happens. So this is a normal, quote-unquote normal show today where I just share interesting, uh, fun, sometimes inspiring stories that I find over the internet. Uh, I'm going to go back to doing Ken in the Kitchen episodes as of Monday. I'm just waiting for some equipment that I ordered to get here over the weekend that will make that whole process a lot more reliable. I, if you've been watching this week, I've had problems with cameras uh, connected over Wi-Fi, just disconnecting randomly and weird stuff. So, so yeah. Anyway, I hope you guys are all doing well is the bottom line. I hope everyone is having a good day, a good week. And as always, good morning, Sean. Glad to see you here, my friend. And yeah, so the other thing I'm doing a little bit different on today's show is uh, a friend of mine, Nicole, uh, has sent me some sort of a care package. And uh, she suggested that I open it on the show, so I'm going to do that at the end of today's broadcast. <laughs> Uh, excuse me. It's springtime. My allergies are freaking going nuts. Can't stand them. 
But if I take Claritin or Benadryl, and both of them do this, even the quote-unquote non-drowsy medications tend to just knock me out. And, uh, yeah, considering I have a day job I have to go to later on today, I, I really... I can't really take that stuff, so I just have to suck it up and deal with it. Good morning, Charles. Good to see you, my friend. Welcome to Friday. I hope you're doing well. Oh, and no special David's tea today. Just uh, the, the best supermarket brand, as far as I'm concerned, which is uh, Bigelow, and it's their mint medley tea. My stomach's been weird. Uh, the last couple of days, so I figured mint would be good for the stomach. So yeah, anyway, I'm going to stop uh, rambling. Local honey, you know, I have tried that. I really have, Charles. I've tried local honey, and it doesn't do a damn thing for me. <laughs> I have been miserable since I was a wee lad because I am allergic to sagebrush, and nothing helps that. Local honey doesn't help it. Nothing. I, I used to get shots as a kid because my allergies were so just wicked. And yeah, so it's just been a lifelong problem. I'm used to it. It's annoying. I will still complain about it. But, uh, you know, it is what it is. So let's, let's go over to the first story I want to share with you guys today. <laughs> there we go. Uh, as we all know, uh, food banks are having issues keeping stocked with food for people who need that food. And, uh, yeah, the uh, restaurants have tried to step up and fill that need as much as they can. There is a group out of Asheville, North Carolina called Food Connection uh, that seeks out restaurants and festivals with unused food and actually just delivers it directly to people who need it. And that's weird. All right, I'm going to have to... Sorry about all the ads you're going to see on this page. So, uh, Food Connection is the name of this group, which is partnered with Wicked Weeds Cultura and the YMCA uh, to meet a growing need for free meals. And so Rachel Dudasik, uh, who is one of the uh, coordinators over at Wicked Weed, had called uh, Pate uh, regarding teaming up to donate fresh meals to uh, community partners. And uh, they have worked with food distribution company U.S. Foods uh, to deliver about 9, 900 meals, sorry, not 9,000, 900 meals over a three-day period. But even so, it was a, a tough go until an anonymous donor stepped forward with $200,000 for Food Connection to cover uh, food and distribution costs. And they, this anonymous donor also made a separate donation to the YMCA. And because of that, they can now uh, provide 5,000 meals a week, which is amazing. So no one knows the identity of the donors. And they, you know, it's just a, a fine example, I feel, of, of people who want to do the right thing and who have the means to do so, and they just step up and do it. Now, this is not to say that there aren't underlying systemic issues in our country that really need addressing in the long term so that the, you know, people don't need to rely 
on the generosity of anonymous donors with deep pockets in order to feed the hungry. Uh, in a perfect world, or at least in a better world, we wouldn't need the generosity of, of anonymous donors. We would just have a system in place that took care of people. But in times being what they are, it's wonderful to see people like this anonymous donor step up and really just do what needs to be done. I love it. So I, I want to highlight things like that as they come to my attention here. Now the next story, uh, and I love stories about teens who, who step up and do the right thing during this pandemic and really any time because there's a, you know, there's a stereotypical view that teenagers are just self-absorbed and, and not really cognizant of the world around them and, and what's going on. This particular teen um, over in the UK uh, has been given the, the, the title of guardian angel for particular family because he uh, he just kind of happened by at the right time. He uh, dove into a canal to save a drowning 15-month-old toddler, as this article from the sun.com uh, recounts. He was walking his dogs, and he saw the, the toddler fall into the water. It was 15-month-old Reggie Hampton. And so Riley Ferguson, there he is there with the toddler in question, just saw the toddler fall in, and he took off his shoes and his coat and just dove right in after. And he saw the, the kid shouting and waving, and he just jumped in there and swam to the bottom of the canal, apparently, to get him. And uh, the kid is actually not nearly as traumatized as you would think, the, the toddler. Uh, and, of course, his parents are, are proud. Someone tried to set up a GoFundMe for Riley to reward him, I guess, and he is refusing to take the money. And it was, it, there was a, a confluence of events here that all just happened fortuitously at the same time. He, he was just kind of treading water with the toddler in his arms, and he was able to call out, and there were people that heard him call out as he was kind of treading water with, with the toddler. So uh, it really ended up being kind of a team effort but the, I mean, the local counselor there in the town named Tom Gordon, which is funny because I have a, a friend here in Reno named Tom Gordon, uh, even called uh, on the mayor of Wakefield Council to ensure that he re that Riley receives recognition for his actions. But uh, like I said, some people tried to set up a, a GoFundMe or something to reward him. And Riley's all, no, I don't want any money for this. If you're going to do that, just donate the money to the... Uh, National Health Service Charities. So, selfless kid, brilliant kid, 15-year-old uh, Riley Ferguson, who, in an act of pure heroism, because the word hero and the term heroism does tend to get overused, uh, completely applies to Riley. here, And uh, good, good to him. Good on him for doing that, and good for him for not taking any monetary reward on top of it. I mean, this, this kid's heart is just obviously in the right place, and uh, it's always fun to, to see that. Because, again, teenagers get a bad rap a lot of times. And then, uh, I guess the last story for today is uh it's a fun one it's kind of for a niche audience of anyone watching this show if you're a fan of anime chances are you've watched a film produced by uh, a studio called ghibli over in japan studio ghibli is responsible for uh, 
a lot of the more mainstream titles of anime, as much as anime is mainstream now. They have a museum over in Japan, and the museum apparently is amazing, but it's hard to get in there. They limit the amount of tickets that are sold um, to people to, to go through it, and they have always had a very strict no photography and no video policy. So very few people know what the inside of Studio, the Studio Ghibli Museum looks like. Well, they've thrown all that out, and they have now posted virtual tours of their museum online, on YouTube, for free, and you can just tour the museum that way. So they, they've created a brand new YouTube channel that's just nothing but walkthrough videos from their Tokyo Museum. And they had to close, obviously, back in February when the whole COVID thing kind of started ramping up and gaining steam. Uh, but they, they decided to not be as secretive as they once were and uh, and just provide tours virtually for people, which is fantastic. I think it's great. My wife and I love anime and uh, anything that gets uh, more attention on the genre we think is a good thing. There are four videos, according to this uh, article on Happy Mag TV, uh, that reveal basically all the different sections of the of the museum. Uh, the latest video added, I guess, showcases a cafe there that's decorated in the style of Howl's Moving Castle, which is, an, again, another one of their more popular mainstream animes that people are likely to be familiar with. So it's, it's really cool. Love it. Um, they've even released um, zoom backgrounds based on some of their more popular anime films that people can use in their zoom meetings for free. So it's fun. It's fun to see the way businesses uh, are adapting to the lockdown and the, the quarantine. And it's great. I just, I love that there's, this is a horrible pandemic and the, the, the cost of life is, is not acceptable, but I think we'd be remiss in not acknowledging that there's been some really interesting and positive things that have come out of this. And uh, yeah, it just it, it inspires me. It gives me hope that we're going to come through all of this okay in the end. So for uh, the two people who are watching today, I am now going to unbox my care package from my friend Nicole. I have no idea what's in it. Uh, she was really excited for me to open it, though. I don't know if she's watching today or not, but if you are, Nicole, here we go. Let's go ahead and see what she has, what she has sent to me here. You can see I, yeah, I blocked out the addresses there. Mama didn't raise no fool. Okay, there's candy. I can see that much. Bubble wrap. A fun kind of bubble wrap. Ooh, what do we have here? We have Twix, which is always good. Karina's going to be really happy about the Twix. M&M's, always a good thing. We, Karina and I call chocolate right now morale chocolate. <laughs> Animaniacs, the soundtrack. 16 original songs from the hit TV series, complete lyrics included. Beautiful. Thank you, Nicole. That's gorgeous. Love it. That's going to be fun to listen to. 
Oh my gosh. <laughs> Animaniacs Volume 1. Fantastic. Thank you so much, Nicole. Oh, that is brilliant. Love it, love it, love it, love it, love it. Wow. Beautiful. Fantastic. Oh my God, this is wonderful. Thank you so much. What's it look like? Let's take a look here. Really nice cover art there. Oh yeah, that's beautiful. Look at that. Oh, this is gorgeous. Thank you, Nicole. Thank you so much. Oh, this is going to be fun. This is going to be so much fun to watch. Ah, oh, this is going to be great. Thank you. And Snickers. Love the Snickers, too. Fantastic. Ah, oh, well, we have even more good stuff to watch now. Beautiful. Love it. Thank you so much, Nicole. That is fantastic. Thank you. That's going to be a lot of fun. A lot of fun. I've heard that uh, there's going to be a new Animaniacs movie with all the original voice cast, apparently, at some point. So timely, this is. This is great. Thank you. I love this. Thank you so much. Okay, well, um, that's it. That takes us to the end of our show for Friday. Uh, thank you so much for joining me. And then Monday will be uh, an episode of Ken in the Kitchen. And I'm going to attempt something with pancakes. Because uh, I've never made pancakes from scratch. I'm pretty sure when I was a teenager, I must have made them maybe from a mix. Probably from a mix. Uh but never from scratch. I'm going to try making pancakes from scratch with a couple of interesting ingredients in there to, to, to make it more interesting. So yeah, I hope you will join me for that on Monday. That'll be right here on this channel at 9.30 Pacific time. Yeah, well, thank you for joining me. I hope everybody had a great week. I hope you're doing well this morning as you go off into the world to do whatever it is you're going to do. I hope you have a wonderful weekend. Get lots of rest. Just kind of reset your clock, reset your brain. I'm definitely going to be doing that myself this weekend. Thank you so much for joining me. And yeah, uh, until next time, I'm Ken McKim. You take care and remember to be kind to yourself and everybody else because kindness really matters right now more than ever. All right, take care, everybody.